What's going on everyone? My name's Evan Jevnikar and I'm the Daily Dino Guy. In this video, we're going to be discussing the dinosaurs that were recently discovered in 2025. Several of these dinosaurs are truly exceptional. They reveal fascinating evolutionary stories and some of them even rewrite our understanding of paleontology. Today, we're going to be going over five of these brand new dinosaurs because there is just so much that needs to be said about them. So let me know in the comments which of these dinosaurs you think is the most interesting. Starting off on our list is a Viatum, which lived in Wyoming 230 million years ago, which makes this the oldest dinosaur on our list. This dinosaur was roughly three feet or one meter long. Believe it or not, a Viatum is actually one of the oldest relatives of the long-necked sauropods. These types of two-legged ancestors are often called sauropodomorphs. The reason a Viatum is so special is because paleontologists were not expecting to find sauropodomorphs this early in North America. During the late Triassic, sauropodomorphs lived exclusively in the southern hemisphere of Pangaea. Today, these would be countries like Argentina or South Africa. These dinosaurs were restricted in their range because the South Pole was too cold and the equator was insanely hot. The equator was so hot during most of the Triassic that it formed an extreme desert belt that was impossible to live in. This vast desert could reach up to an average of 122 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius. No plants could survive there, which meant that the plant-eating sauropodomorphs couldn't live there either or migrate into the northern hemisphere. But the discovery of a Viatum completely changes that. Instead, it seems that at least some small plant-eating dinosaurs were able to migrate into the northern hemisphere sometime in the late Triassic. The authors didn't provide an explanation for why a Viatum shows up in the northern hemisphere. One explanation could be that during this time period, Earth was going through serious climate change called the Carnian Pluvial Episode. The increased heat had intensified the water cycle and it caused global monsoons that are found all over the globe. These monsoons happened every year for about a million years. And they experienced about four and a half feet or over one meter in rain. While this definitely sounds apocalyptic, it was actually essential for the evolution of dinosaurs. During this pluvial episode, we see that dinosaurs become much more common in the southern hemisphere. And we begin to see the first strictly carnivorous dinosaurs in the northern hemisphere. It's thought that these monsoons relax the heat barrier just enough to let let smaller carnivores cross over into the northern hemisphere. Smaller sauropodomorphs, like a Viatum, were actually thought to be omnivorous. The teeth of its relatives, like Eoraptor, were actually more blade-like as opposed to spoon or peg-shaped like later sauropods. They could more easily cut through meat while still being able to strip leaves off plants. This meant that they didn't have to exclusively live where plants grew, and it would have been more likely to migrate across into the northern hemisphere. So a Viatum shows that we still have so much more to learn about the origin and rise of dinosaurs. Next up, we have Novavis, which lived in China 124 million years ago. Novavis was a really small bird, reaching only six inches or 15 centimeters in length. This little bird was an opposite bird, which were actually the most dominant group of birds before the Cretaceous extinction. These birds had a totally different shoulder structure than modern birds, hence the name, opposite bird. Most of them also still had teeth and claws. This dinosaur is really strange because it had unusually small hips for a bird. The reason this is so strange Strange is because the hips hold essential tail muscles that are used for steering while flying. But because Novavis had really small hips, it probably was not as agile as a modern bird when flying. However, the paleontologists who found this bird think it may not have even been a problem. Even though they weren't as small as Novavis, they found that its relatives also had pretty small hips. Since these relatively weak tail muscles were not that uncommon, they think that many opposite birds found a way to compensate for this lack of control when flying. Moving on, we have Zara Cursor, which lived in Uzbekistan 90 million years ago. This dinosaur was able to reach up to 11 and a half feet or three and a half meters in length. This dinosaur was specifically an ornithomimus, just like Gallimimus. These types of dinosaurs are known for convergently evolving a body like ostriches. They had long shin and foot bones compared to their thigh bones. This meant they could complete one stride faster and therefore run faster than any other dinosaur. Zara Cursor in particular would have been able to run up to 38 miles per hour or 61 kilometers per hour. Which is good because this dinosaur would have used that speed to avoid a lot of predators. During this time period, Uzbekistan was filled with at least three dangerous predators. The first and biggest was Ulugbegsaurus. Even though it weighed over 2,200 pounds or 1,000 kilograms,
programs, it was surprisingly fast. Based on similarly sized predators, it would have reached up to 24 to 28 miles per hour or 34 to 45 kilometers per hour. The next would have been the medium sized early Tyrannosaur Timberlangia. This predator was about the same size as Zara Cursor and would have been pretty fast as well. Timberlangia could probably run about 34 to 35 miles per hour or 55 to 56 kilometers per hour, which is really close to Zara Cursor speed. And the smallest and fastest predator would have been the Raptor Itamyris. Even though we don't know much about Itamyris, we can estimate its speed based on similarly sized raptors. Therefore, this raptor could probably run up to 37 miles per hour or 59 kilometers per hour, which is almost the same speed as Zara Cursor. Raptors and small tyrannosaurs were the fastest predators of the Cretaceous period. So being as fast as possible was crucial for the survival of Zara Cursor. Now before we get to the next dinosaurs, I want to take a moment to thank the amazing people that make these videos possible. My daily Dino Direct members. Thank you so much for your support and passion for paleontology. Because of you, this channel is able to put out videos that are as understandable and as accessible as possible. If you want to help support this channel and take your dinosaur knowledge to the next level, then you should consider joining Daily Dino Direct. You'll get early access to these YouTube videos and exclusive lectures from me and other leading paleontologists in the field. It's everything I would have wanted when I was becoming a paleontologist. So go to my website and sign up. The next dinosaur is Tamri Raptor. And it lived in Egypt a hundred million years ago. This dinosaur was a massive predator, reaching up to 30 feet or 90 meters in length. The fossils that belong to Tamri Raptor have one of the craziest stories in the history of paleontology. These bones were first found in 1914 by the German paleontologist Ernst Stromer. Stromer was one of the first paleontologists to study Egyptian dinosaurs. In fact, he's also the paleontologist who first discovered Spinosaurus. When the skull bones of Tamri Raptor were first found, Stromer originally considered them to belong to Carcharodontosaurus based on their shark-like teeth. But in World War II, the city that Stromer lived was bombed by the British. While Stromer survived the bombing, the museum was completely destroyed, along with all of the Egyptian fossils. The only thing Stromer had to show for his life's work were a few photos and a sketch of each fossil. It wasn't until over a hundred years later that paleontologists would take a second look at those sketches and photos of this supposed Carcharodontosaurus. Since then, many more complete fossils of Carcharodontosaurus have been found, and they were compared to the old sketches and photographs. They realized that Stromer's fossils were actually from a unique dinosaur, which they dubbed Tamari Raptor. It was different from Carcharodontosaurus in that it had wider backbones, uniquely shaped leg muscles, and a small horn on its snout. But overall, it was still a massive predator, weighing up to 3.3 short tons or 3 metric tons. When Tamari Raptor was alive, Egypt looked way different than the way it does today. Sea level was much higher back then, so Egypt was much more of a coastal environment. Rivers and deltas flowed into mangrove forests that resided near the sea. As I mentioned earlier, Tamri Raptor lived alongside Spinosaurus. Rather than these two mega predators competing over resources, they focused on different prey. Spinosaurus stuck more to the coast and preyed on large fish, while Tamri Raptor would have been more inland and would have hunted large sauropods like Egyptosaurus and Paralotitan. And finally, we have Mexidrachid, which lived in, you guessed it, Mexico 73 million years ago. Mexidrachid reached up to 8 feet or 2.5 meters in length. As an ornithomimid, like Zara Cursor, it would have had long legs and feet would have had a beak, and it would have been covered in feathers. But this dinosaur had one thing that set apart from all the other ornithomimids. The hand bones were longer than its foot bones, which were already really long for a dinosaur. Normally, ornithomimids are some of the fastest dinosaurs in their environments. But the paleontologists who found Mexidrachid think that these long hands may have actually weighed it down. It wouldn't have been off balance that much, but it would have prevented it from running as fast as it normally would have if it had normal sized hands. So why did it have such long hands? Well, these fossils have left paleontologists completely puzzled, leaving only speculation. Some think that they would have used these long hands to pull down tree branches, just like ancient giant sloths. This is actually something that Therizinosaurus convergently evolved to do. However, this might be unlikely for Mexidrachid, since it lived alongside the equally unusual dinosaur, Paraxenisaurus. This weird animal already had large hooked claws and long arms that would have helped it pull down tree branches. It seems unlikely that Mexidrachid would compete with this dinosaur in the same niche. So that probably would have been what it used its long hands for. Other wilder theories think that it would have used these long claws to help it catch fish. However, that might not be the case either. While no claws were found for Mexidrachid, ornithomimids are not known to have claws that are ideal for catching small prey. When we look at the foot claws of raptors, the hand claws of bigger predators like Allosaurus, or even the talons of birds of prey, we can see that these claws are long and curved, which act as 
hooks when they sink into prey, but the claws of nearly all ornithomimids are short and almost entirely straight. These would have been the exact opposite of what you would need to catch prey. So this function seems unlikely too. Really, we have no idea what they were used for. It's going to take additional studies, probably more fossils, and maybe even simulation to figure out what these hands were best used for. Well, those are all five dinosaurs. Tune in next time to hear about all the other dinosaurs that have been found in 2025. If you made it this far into the video, then you probably love dinosaurs as much as I do. If that's true, then you should subscribe to my newsletter. Each month, I gather every single study on dinosaurs that's been published, and I send it directly to you. Normally, this will cost hundreds of dollars, but I send it to you absolutely free. You're not going to find a newsletter like this anywhere else. So go to my website and sign up. If you enjoyed this survey of brand new dinosaurs, be sure to give it a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss another video from me. And don't forget to check out Daily Dino Guy on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Threads, and X for even more fascinating dinosaur facts. Till next time, keep exploring the ancient past with me, Daily Dino Guy.